today. Welcome, welcome. We will be discussing today's awesome, amazing lesson. You're the very first class that's ever going to get this lesson in the way that I'm teaching it today, although I've taught it in the past. It's just new and exciting with really cool slides because that's the way we do things here on Film Online. So today we will be discussing pre-production part three in which we get into shot lists and scheduling. Now, um, your shot lists and your scheduling are the last final pieces that you will need to submit for this semester. These are the big grades. So I, I kind of went over briefly um, before Thanksgiving break, kind of what the big grades were this semester. I will remind you, they are your revised screenplay. That is a huge one, a huge one. You really want that to be like your best, best, best screenplay that you can before the end of the semester. That's a huge grade. Okay, that is the bulk of, of not the bulk, but that is the largest grade that you have this semester. Um, you've got your, um, you've got your line script and your script breakdown. Those are two separate grades. So how well did you break down your script? How well did you line your script? And now that we've are kind of getting, now that we're kind of past lining the script, now I know that you're still probably doing it and that's fine, but now that we've learned about it, now that we've talked about it, maybe and hopefully you've started it. Um, now we're going to get into the next two things that you need to do for your semester, which are your shot lists, which is a really big one. Um, and your scheduling. And we're actually going to try something new for scheduling this year at the recommendation of a former, a former student of mine. So you guys are going to be guinea pigs um, in a couple of ways, um, but uh, I'll get to that here in a little bit. So today we are discussing shot lists and scheduling. This is the final chapter of our pre-production series. Um, after this, it's just get stuff done. So um, we'll have our lesson at the end of the week. And then um, after that, you basically have a couple of weeks to kind of work on stuff. And we, we'll, we might have a class here or there because I, I need to do a thing or two, but um, you're going to have a lot of free time in terms of class time to actually work on this stuff because uh, these are your big grades this semester. And when you complete all of these things, you'll have a nice, nice, clean pre-production package um, that you can show your producer or in this case, your film teacher. And I can take a look at it and say, this looks awesome. This looks like you're ready to go. You have green light. You can actually begin going into the production phases of making your movie, um, which is pretty cool, pretty exciting. So let us move on. So shot list. You guys have probably heard about a shot list before, yes? Like that's a pretty like filmic thing. Like you've probably heard me say it before, or maybe you've heard like seniors in the past say it before, or maybe you've seen it. Um, just kind of online or like you've heard it in the back of your head. So a shot list is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's basically all of your shots in list form. And so what you're going to do is this is really easy because you guys have been working on your line script. And we already, as you recall, in your line script, you already put the shot numbers and what kinds of shots that they were onto your script as you lined it. So remember you wrote the lines, you do the lines, then you had like shot 1A, shot 1B, shot 1C, so on and so forth, right? Um, all a shot list is, is we're gonna take that information from your line script and we're just gonna translate that into a shot list, a nice handy dandy list. So all of the shots that we need are in one nice, easy to read table basically. Um, and this is going to help us as we move into production. This is going to help you while you are doing production. So you've already kind of done this work, assuming that you had completed your line script. I know you haven't probably completed your line script yet. I even told you like you might want to drag your feet on it a little bit because the lesson that I'm going to teach on Friday might inspire you in some way to look at your script a little bit differently. And that's totally cool. Um, but as you line your script, you could even enter things into your shot list as you do it. You could even do these things concurrently. Um, because it's a, it's a lot of the same information. We're just putting it into kind of a, a table, a table format. And the nice thing about a shot list is that it organizes and groups all those shots. Um, and, the, and then we, and once we have it finished, we can actually shuffle it around and organize things based on different categories. So for example, we can, we can organize all of your shots that take place in a specific location, or we can organize all of your shots that have a particular actor in them or that have a particular prop in them. And this can be really helpful to you as you begin scheduling and as you begin planning your shoots. Um, and this can help you estimate how long things are gonna take. So for example, um, if I'm using uh, Nathan and if Nate's, Nate's my main actor because he's so smooth as we learned in the table read not too long ago, so smooth. 
Um, so if Nate is my super smooth actor um, in my film, but Nate's availability is very, very limited, for example, like I know he's only available on Tuesday and Thursday and that's it. Like that's all I can get him for because then he's, he's leaving. He's going to go traveling. He's going to go back to Tahoe and fall into a pit or something. I don't know. Um, but if I know that I only have those two dates for my actor, I can schedule my, my shots around him. So I can take my shot list and I can organize it based on all of the shots that Nate's in. And I can put, and I can organize, I'm like, okay, here's a list of all the shots that are Nate's in. And, and it's totally out of order. Like the scenes are all over the place, but these are all the Nate shots. And I know I need to get those done on Tuesday and Thursday. Cause after that, Nate is gone. And you can do this for any types of, you know, needs that you might have. If you have an actor that's like only available, or maybe you have a location that's only available on a certain time, or maybe you have a specific prop, maybe you're using like a car or a vehicle. We've done that in the past at Freestyle where we were borrowing somebody's car that kind of looked like a cop car. Um, and we had limited access to it on specific days. So we had to schedule around that. So creating a shot list can help you organize and category things into groups. And that can really, really help you as you begin planning your shots and estimating how long it's going to take to actually get those shots so you can break up your shooting your schedule into a shooting schedule you can break it up into a number of days and figure out how and when to shoot your 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 work uh, i remember this is what the film industry is all about it's about getting so planned that when you actually get onto set things go smoothly and you expedite this process as quickly as possible i want to emphasize this okay you want to get through production as quickly as possible. Now, I know in the past, I have sat there and said things to you like, it's really, really important that you get the shot. You have to get the shot, right? I've drilled that into your head. Get the shot, no matter what it takes, get the shot, right? Okay, that's true. I still want you to get the shot. I still want you to be creative. I still want you to go above and beyond what you think you're capable of, right? Um, that's part of what being a filmmaker is. But the other side of being a filmmaker is getting stuff done and getting stuff done in a timely fashion because time is money in this industry. There are filmmakers who are successful filmmakers, not because they were born with some amazing talent at filmmaking. No, no. In fact, there's a lot of filmmakers that just developed their skills to a competent level. I wouldn't even say they're the most talented filmmakers known to man. What they are talented at is getting stuff done. Right. If you want a job in this industry, I would say it's almost more important. Like once you're competent and you can learn competent, like there are film rules. You just follow film language rules and you're competent. Like once you're competent, it's really more important just to get stuff done. It's about waking up in the morning and getting there at 6 a.m. when call time is 6 a.m. and making sure everything is getting set up and making sure that your your shoots run smoothly. So when you're out there shooting your work, you want to be careful that you don't fall into that perfectionist trap, right? Don't spend five hours shooting a shot that's only five seconds of your movie and you're trying to get it just right after 20 or 30 takes when 19 of those takes are exactly the same. Like you've probably been there. You've probably done that. I've done that too. Sarah, right? we're having flashbacks, aren't yeah, we? <laughs> every, yeah, 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 you're all having flashbacks from your, from your narrative films, okay? So when we're making our shot list, this can really help us and help us to make sure that we are budgeting our time um, in an appropriate way. Um, and that way you know exactly how long everything is gonna take. So that's kind of one of the purposes of the shot list is to help you plan and prepare for that scheduling process. Because remember, the scheduling is super, super important because there are so many bodies and so many people and departments and crew members when it comes to a big film um, everyone needs to be on the same page about what time they need to be where, um, and you need to make sure that everything goes smoothly because if you're waiting for someone to show up because you weren't organized in making sure that everyone knows where and when they're supposed to be, that's daylight that you're burning, that's less time that you have to shoot, and that's money that you've, that you've wasted. In the film industry, that'll get you fired. Um, on your films, that's just going to make you really frustrated. Um, so remember to work really professionally and be super organized because the more organized and professional you are, the more organized and professional the people that you work with will be and more seriously they will take your project. The other nice thing about a shot list is that you can actually have this with you on set as a checklist. You can actually have that checklist open 
and you could even add like boxes to your shot list because your shot list is customizable. You can, you're going to make it your own. You can actually add like a category that has like a checkbox. So like you could actually go through and like check it off as you go and make sure that you hit all of the, all of the shots on your list. And if you did a good line script and you have full coverage, remember that term that we used in our lesson before Thanksgiving, if you have full coverage of your scenes and you copy that information from your line script into your shot list, then you know you have full coverage on your shot list. And if you go through your shot list and check them off one by one and get all of those shots, then you know you've got full coverage. You've got every shot that you're going to need to edit your film together and to do so in a way that is pleasing to you, right? So a shot, a shot list can be really, really useful um, as a production tool as well to help you plan in pre-production, sure, but as an actual checklist of, of things to check off as you go on any given day um, on when you are on set. So here is an example of what a shot list looks like. This is the official freestyle shot list. I borrowed it from someone. Um, and it's just a Google Doc and I will be sharing this with you. And uh, this is the shot list template that I want you to use. And this is what you're gonna work with. And you can actually go through this um, and you can see all the different options on here. So I will, I'm gonna click this link right here at the bottom and that will open this up. And here is our official freestyle shot list. You can see I added a fun little freestyle logo over there. So nice, so nice. So here's your production title. You just enter in the title of your movie, okay? Here's the director. This is probably you and the person that you're working with. I would, I would assume, I would hope. If it's not, we have a problem. Um, locations. Um, you can actually do, an, if you wanted to, you could do an individual shot list, like for each scene. You could do like an individual shot list for each location. I, I wouldn't worry about doing that. I would just do all, since I'm grading your shot list as a whole, I want you to do all of your, all of your shots here on this one page. If you really wanted to be like that level of organization, you could create new tabs here at the bottom. If you can see my mouse, you could create new tabs here at the bottom where you make like different scenes, but we're actually gonna do something a little bit different um, that I'll get into with scheduling anyway. So you probably don't need to worry about that. So just go ahead and put all of your shots here in this, in this list. So here, for example, is like my first shot. Here's shot 1A. So this is scene one, and these are just numbered exactly as they are on your line script, exactly as they are as we went through in our lesson the other day. If you need to review, I've uploaded that lesson, and it's there on the YouTube channel for you to review, and I believe I've shared my slides with you as well. So you just number in, here's scene one, shot A. Um, in this particular shot, this is a long shot, and, and there's these cool little drop-down things that are here on this shot list. This is one of, one of the reasons why I like this template and why I'm sharing it with you, is each one of these has a little drop-down, so you can kind of just choose. Like, all right, this is a long shot, kind of like an establishing shot. Maybe it's a Griffith's pattern shot kind of a deal, okay? Is there any movement in this shot? No, it's a stationary shot, but it could be any one of these things. It could be all kinds of stuff, but no, this is a stationary shot. We're just going to be locked down on a tripod, no big thing. Um, the angle, is it a high angle, is it a low angle, is it a bird's eye, is it a Dutch tilt? If you remember all those things way back from your video scavenger hunt, right? Okay, uh, this is just a mid angle. Most of your shots are probably going to be a mid angle unless you're trying to create a certain feeling or emotion because you're looking down on someone or up at someone or you're doing that creepy Dutch tilt that we learned about way back in your experimental units. So this is a nice uh, mid angle shot. Uh, what kind of lens do I want? Do I need any special gear or anything like that for this shot? Well, it's not a, it's not a steady cam shot. It's not a GoPro shot. I don't need a dolly because it's a stationary shot. Um, I'm just going to do a nice wide angle lens because this is a long shot. I want to make sure I get the whole, the whole city block or whatever. All right. So I'm going to put my wide angle lens on that shot. Who's what, what is in this shot? Is it a, is it a building? Is it a person? Well, this is character A and I'll, t I'll show you how to customize this here in a second. And what location is it? It's uh, location A, and I'll show you how to customize it. Is it interior or exterior? This is an exterior shot. Is it day or night? This is a day sh shot. I don't know why that's green. That's weird. Don't be green. Don't be green. Oh, it's conditional formatting. Go away. Here we go. This is a day or night shot. Um, is it, uh, do you need any specific props? You can customize this list of props. So if you have a specific car or you have a, 
um, a, uh, a dog, you can, you can change this to pets or something like that. You, if you needed like a certain piece of paper. So remember that script breakdown that we did, right? Like we broke down your script and, and we highlighted everything and highlighted all those specific props. So you should know by looking at your line script and your script breakdown, because hopefully they're on the same sheet of paper, right? As you look at that, you should be able to look in any given lined shot you should be able to see what is in that shot. Is there any highlighted props that you need to include? And this can help you not forget anything when it's time to shoot this day's worth of shots. So this shot 1A has got prop number one. This is a story day. Um, you may recall that term from our Rocket Jump School video that we watched where he talked about breaking down the script. Um, and he talked about doing different story days for different departments. You remember he used the example of Die Hard where in Die Hard, his tank top gets like more gross as the day goes on, right? And those are quote unquote different story days. Um, what, you know, what, which dirty, what level of dirty tank top does Bruce Willis need to wear for Die Hard? Maybe you have different story days in your film where different wardrobes are required, or maybe you've got different props like that are, that are changing over the course of time, for example, like a painting being painted or something like that. And maybe you need different versions of that. So you need to know. Um, so knowing what story day can be helpful. That may not apply to many of you, um, but it might apply to some of you. So it's, I've included it, it's there. Here's a section for notes. If you have specific notes, this can be really helpful. For example, um, I just typed as an example, uh, oh, I'm gonna frame this on the left because I want it framed on the left for some reason. Uh, oh, and this is the 60 frames per second shot because I'm gonna do slow motion, right? So you can type any kinds of notes in here. This is just notes for yourself, that reminders that you might need um, for any given particular shot. This is sound. There are two options here. I haven't gone over this with you, but I will be when we get to our production series of lessons and we talk about slating your work. But here's a little teaser for you. Um, is it sync or is it moss? And sync means you're recording synced sound with your shot, okay? Like dialogue, something like that. And moss, um, we're not really sure what moss means. We think it might be from an old German guy who used to say, without sound, but we're not really sure. Um, it could also be motor only sound. There's some debate as to where this term comes from, but MOS means you don't have any recorded sound for that clip. So maybe you're just recording some B-roll and you're gonna add sound effects to it later, for example. So this can help you know, do you need your boom mic? Do, which I haven't checked out to you yet. Do you, need your, do you need your boom mic operator? Do you need your audio recorder? Do you have someone on your crew to handle those responsibilities? Or is it just a MOS shot and you don't have to worry about it? Scrolling on down here, we've got shot duration. Now this is kind of a pre-planning for when we get into the next segment of today's lesson, which is all about creating strip boards and creating a schedule, a shooting day schedule. So a shot duration, this is how long is that shot? Okay, how long is that shot? So you should be able to look at your page and kind of tell, because remember we broke it down into eights and remember a page is about a minute, right? So if it's a full page, we know it's a minute long. If it's half a page, you know, it's about 30 seconds and so on and so forth. If it's an eighth of a page, maybe it's a little bit less, right? So you should kind of time it in your head or look at your page and how you've broken it down into eighths and try to figure out how long this shot is. This particular shot I said was 24 minutes, which is absolutely ridiculous. There's no shot that you're gonna shoot that's 24 minutes and five seconds long. But for the purposes of demonstration, that's what I've typed. I've typed 24 minutes and five seconds here. And here I have anticipated the number of takes required to get this shot, to get the shot, right? Pro tip, pro tip, you don't really want more than like three to five takes. Like if you, if you have to take like 10 takes of your actor, you're taking too many, all right? So your actors are either not prepared or you're not prepared or you're being too detail oriented and perfectionist about your work, okay? Um, three takes is good and move on. Otherwise you're never gonna get through production, okay? Five takes if it's an especially challenging kind of take, okay? How many of you have taken like 10 or 20 takes in your films before and then you get in the editing room and they all look exactly the same and you're trying to get to dig through all the takes. I still do this when I make stupid little cartoon videos. I still do this and I still have to remind myself, it's like, no, you're doing it the same every single time, it's fine. You know, you're just being a perfectionist. You don't wanna to have to dig through 20 takes of the exact same thing, 
Okay. So for this particular long shot, I've said that I'm going to take two takes of this. I don't know why. That's just the number that I put in, but you can do any number that you want that's up here. Um, but I put in the number two and this column here is the duration times the takes. So this takes my shot duration and it multiplies it by the take. So this gives me an idea of how much running camera time I'm going to have for any particular shot, which can be really helpful to me as I begin planning my days and what shots I need to include on what shooting days, right? If I've got like 10 minutes worth of running camera stuff, well, that's not a lot. I can do that, I can do that easy. If I've got 48 minutes here and 10 seconds, like, oh, that's, that's almost an hour of running shot and running like, mm, that's going to be a challenge. Like, I don't know if I can do that. Something's wrong. I need to look, reassess this, which is true. Like I shouldn't have a shot that's 24 minutes long. Right. Um, but maybe but this can, uh, but this can also help you kind of figure out where you're at up here where I put raw shot production time. This is the total of all of these cat all these columns so that just adds all these columns together so if i if i added something here so let's say i added something here so let's say i added a shot that's um one minute and five seconds and it's going to be and i'm going to do four takes okay so now it makes four minutes and 20 seconds here and it's going to add these two together and to this total time here so I know that I'm going to have, this kind of gives me an idea of how much raw footage I'm working with, okay? Which can help you kind of figure out, oh, well, I know it's going to take at least this much time and then I need to add setting up time and then I know I'm going to have to move the camera and the lights and the equipment every time I go to the other person's singles, right? So you, I need to add like half an hour for that, right? And then that can help you kind of figure out how long a shoot is actually going to take which you can then use this category here, shooting day. This is basically like your dailies, right? So I'm gonna say, oh, okay, this shot's gonna be on shooting day one. And this shot is actually a totally different location. So, I, oops, I need to adjust that. Here we go. So I'm gonna actually change this to shooting day two and so on and so forth. So once you kind of group all these together, you can kind of figure out how you wanna go about um, figuring out your shooting day. And the cool thing about this shot list is when you're all done and like everything's, everything's filled in and everything like that, you can actually organize these categories by any of these, you organize your shots by any of these categories. So I can, for example, go here to subject and come up here to column G where these are all my characters. And I can click this little arrow here and I can say, sort this sheet A to Z and it'll take all my shots and it'll short, it'll sort this by the character. So it'll be character A, character B, so on and so forth. If I want to do it for location, I can lump all these together by doing the same way. Sort A to Z. And if I want to go back to like my numbered scenes in order, I just go back to the scenes here and then number them here and do that in order and then do the shots and do an order and it'll go back in order. Okay. Pretty handy. You guys understand? So kind of cool, kind of cool. Now, if you want to customize this, and you should, it's part of your grade, so you should, um, what you do is you just go here to this tab here at the bottom that says shot list options. And these are all the shot list options. So I've got like the camera movement here. You're probably not going to change that unless you have a very specific camera movement that you need to put in there. You have shot size. Again, you're probably not going to change that at all. Gear and lens, day or night. Here, locations, this is where you're probably going to change, right? You're going to change location A and you're gonna type film room if I'm shooting in the film room. And I'm gonna change character A to uh, Nate because I said Nate was in my, my movie, right? And you're just gonna fill in these different days or objects um, or locations, um, different props. Um, so I'll say this prop needs, um, I don't know. Um, I'll say Nate's bus because I know he likes his bus. So there's his bus, right? All right. So now if I go back to my camera shot list, these are actually options for me to choose in my drop down. So there's the film room. There's Nate. And there's his bus. All right. So customize that stuff first in your shot list options and then start filling in all your camera shots. Otherwise, you'll have to do it all over again. You don't want to have to do that. So do the customization part. 
first. Okay, make sense? Okay, all right. Um, I will be sharing this with you um, right after today's lesson. So you'll be able to see it. You won't be able to edit it. So you need to make a copy to your own Google Drive because I don't want you messing up my template. So you'll, I'll share it with you. You'll be able to see it. You'll have viewer access. And then you make a copy to your own Google Drive. And then you and the person that you're working with can start working on it and start filling it in and putting it all together. All right, coming back to our slides here. Let's move on. So that's the shot list. That's a big part of what is required for you this semester. Which brings us to the last part of what you have due, uh, which are called strip boards. And this is actually new. You're gonna be my first class that has ever done this officially. Uh, and this comes at the recommendation of a former student of mine who was here last year, um, who got into this and she was just phenomenal. And she's like, this is great. You guys, you gotta teach this, you gotta do this. And I was like, all right, I, if you can do it, then I'll teach it. Um, it was I, I, not something that I did in the past, at least not to this degree, but I think it actually might be helpful to you. I think it actually might benefit you in the, in the scheduling process. Um, and since our calendar is a little bit different due to current circumstances, um, I actually think it would be appropriate for us to end the semester um, investigating and figuring out how this works. So in the past where I've had students submit calendars and things like that, you're going to be doing a strip board, which is a little more industry specific, which I like. So a strip board is a shooting schedule of your film. And it's just, this, it's just, a, it's kind of like your shot list, but it's more, it's not quite as specific. It doesn't include all of your shots, but includes all of the scenes and it's just broken up into shooting days. Um, so it has all the scenes and it has like, how many pages are you shooting on any given day? So like, are you shooting one page? Are you shooting half a page? Are you shooting two eights? Are you shooting five eights? Are you shooting like a page and three eights? Like, what are you, what are you shooting? And not necessarily, it, and, it, and you'll have like the scenes that you're working on, but it's a little bit different from your shot list. This is the kind of thing, a shot list is like for you and your camera operator and your cinematographer, right? That's for like the director, like it's for those people, right? Whereas this strip board is kind of for everybody. This is the kind of thing that you can give to your actors so they can remember what it is that they're working on. This is the kind of thing that you can give to all of your different departments, your crew, your sound operator, your camera operator, your slate operator, people that are gonna help you film your movie, that kind of stuff. So a strip board can be easily modified to make a call sheet, for example, that's sent out to your entire staff so that everybody knows what time everyone's supposed to be where. But the really nice thing about strip boards is it's really gonna help you plan your day and budget your time and make sure um, that everything is where it needs to be because it's going to include things like setup time. It's gonna include things like your lunch break. It's gonna include things like the travel time. How long does it take to get to Cuesta Park from my house? How long, once we're done with the Cuesta Park shoot, how long is it gonna to take to get back to so-and-so's house who lives in Cupertino? And you're gonna budget all that into your, your day so that your day is literally scheduled by the minute and to, from start of shoot until end of shoot. And if you do it right, and if you budget time appropriately, and you give yourself a little bit of buffer and you budget appropriately, you're gonna have all of your shots done exactly when you say your shots are gonna be done. And then your crew is gonna get to go home at five o'clock like you promised them. And your actors are gonna get to get home at, private, at five o'clock like you promised them. And now you have a bunch of happy crew members and a bunch of happy actors who are willing to come back for you on Saturday because you totally kept to your schedule. And when you say five o'clock, you mean five o'clock and not, oh shoot, we only got through a quarter of our shots. We're gonna have to film all day on Saturday, all day on Sunday and all day on Monday, right? Like you don't, want to, you don't want to fall into that trap because that's going to tick off your crew because you promised me we were going to be done. That's going to tick off your actors. You told me I was only going to have to do this on one day and I got to go to Tahoe and fall into that pit or whatever, right? So you want to make sure that um, you budget all of your time appropriately. So again, similarly to what we talked about um, with your line script and with your script breakdown and the extreme level of detail and planning, um, your schedule is no exception. A very extreme level of planning to the minute of everything that you are doing on any given shoot day, okay? Extreme scheduling because remember folks, in this industry, time is money, okay? Paying one person an hourly wage isn't a huge deal. Paying 100 people an hourly wage becomes a very huge deal. 
especially if you're all just standing around because you were not prepared. You, the director, were not prepared. So time is money and it is your job. It's your job. And if you want to succeed in the industry, you need to get this part into your head because as I will remind you again, um, there are talented filmmakers and there are filmmakers who get stuff done and do so in a timely fashion. And I think the latter actually is better at getting a lot of work than sometimes the former. Okay. So you want to make sure that you keep your schedule. And once you do these things, then it's on to production. You have your shooting schedule, you have your shot list, you have your line script, you have your breakdown. You've done all this level of like crazy, crazy minute planning you are ready to move on to the production stages. So when you complete that stuff, um, then you can take those shooting days that you put on your strip board, okay? And then you can actually put it onto specific days on a calendar. So, okay, day one, that's gonna be January 7th. And day two, that's gonna be the 10th. And day three, that's gonna be the 11th and so on and so forth. And you can kind of plan those days based on the availability of your crew and actors and locations and, and everything else. Um, but your goal for the end of this semester is not to put the specific days on the calendar. I mean, you can if you want, um, but we're looking at breaking up all the days into a shooting schedule. So this will be day one, this will be day two, this will be day three. Do you think you can shoot all day for six hours? If you don't think so, then maybe you need to break up into half days, right? You need to think about your own, because the, hopefully you can just translate all of this into a calendar without changing anything. Okay. All right. And this ultimately will get you the green light for production. Um, and then those shot lists and those strip boards, I will remind you, are, can, are not just a pre-production tool. They are also a production tool that you can carry with you on set to benefit and help you. Um, so this is a Zenith Celebration presentation. This comes to us from my former student, Kirsten, um, who was here last year. Um, she was perhaps the, not even perhaps, she was the best the best coordinating producer we've ever had at Freestyle. She was a total rock star. Um, she made this her thing. And she worked on her senior narrative and got so into the planning and just loved it and fell in love with it that she made this her focus for her zenith. Um, and she spent months getting even more involved in how do I plan pre-production? How do I go transition from pre-production into production? She got super, super into it. She is easily um, the most well-versed student we've ever had on these particular issues. So, I'm, so if you like this stuff, um, I'm gonna show you her, her Zenith presentation video um, because it kind of touches on some additional things that are not required, um, but might interest you. So if you like this stuff, if you like this stuff, I mean, this is a whole job. This is a whole job that you kind of finish and then hand off to other people. So if you like this work, um, you might be someone who would make a good producer or who would make a good coordinating producer, specifically for pre-production. So here is her video. I think it's informative. It mostly talks about her experience, but you can kind of see some of the documents that she uses and how, how there are so many things involved in pre-production. I'm really only having you do the big ones. There's a lot of other little documents that float around um, that these people manage um, in their jobs and different ways and methods of organization. So uh, I will share this so that you can watch it more better. So I chose to do my Zenith project about management and organization within the film industry. Uh, I started off by doing a lot of research. I researched everything about pre-production and different management tiers. My goal was to make a pre-production package, so I also looked into what kind of documents people who are in management positions use. Um, I created this document to track my progress. It kind of just turned into a list of websites and then also um, a list of some of the documents I found that people use on set in order to keep organized. And those are the ones that I was thinking about including in my pre-production package. So one thing I learned a lot through my research is that people mainly use different internet sites in order to keep organized on set. I found Studio Binder and it had a lot of cool organization strategies. Basically you drop in a screenplay and it would break it up by locations and scenes and everything in terms of actors and schedules and it will create your schedule and it will create your script breakdown for you. 
I tried putting in my senior narrative screenplay to see if that would work and it did actually break it down by location and since it was short I could see all the locations divided out and I could see all the scenes throughout the whole entire play which was pretty cool. So another thing I did was I reached out to people in order to gain more knowledge. Um, I started emailing a producer that was friends with Mr. T um, and she was very sweet and she had a lot of information to share which was very helpful. And I'm also a production assistant for a movie, so the producer shared with me a lot of the documents that we use on set. And when I'm on set, I often use like a spreadsheet to keep everything organized that I'm in charge of. So I also took that into consideration when trying to create my pre-production package. Um, here is the film hierarchy sheet I found, and it kind of shows basically everything in terms of film production and management tiers. It starts at the administrative level, and you go from the CEO, CMO all the way down to like a fashion designer at an administrative level. So in the next is executive level. So we have like the production artist, copywriter, um, program coordinator, all the way down to like assistant director. And then at the operational level, you have the film information assistant, social film specialist, technical writer, um, film analyst, choreographer, film editor, all of that, all the way down to like spot boy security team. So like people on the actual grounds of the film production. Uh, here are some of the documents that I found online, and I think Mr. T uses some of these too, like this location scouting one, but I also found some really cool call sheet documents, and I found a lot of these on Set Hero, um, which had like a bunch of different um, documents that people use and like professional documents that you could download, and you can actually download them right into your spreadsheet, which is like really helpful. So instead of having like a printed out document, you could have an active spreadsheet that you would um, be editing. And then from the emails I had with the producer, she told me a lot about what they did on set. And she says that she uses Monday.com all the time to organize all of her different productions because she's working on multiple productions at once. And Monday.com allows her to have different projects open. So that's very helpful. She has a daily task list. And then I asked her some of the documents that she has. She says budget spreadsheet, deal memos, general talent release, location agreements, and then a bunch of insurance and a bunch of um, legal things in terms of like contracts. And then a call sheet, days out of days, and shot list. So I was familiar with the call sheet from my work um, as a production assistant and then the shot list from Senior Narrative. But I had no idea what the days out of days sheet was. So I wanted to do more research into that. And then also I wanted to make a schedule because that's something I did for my pre-production for Senior Narrative. And I really enjoyed making that. So that's how I chose my final documents. I decided to make a shooting schedule, a location sheet, days out of day sheets, and a call sheet. And then once I had my documents decided, I needed to find a screenplay to use in order to break it down and put it into those documents. Um, so I asked some of my peers, I asked Spencer and Eric if they knew anyone, and I asked Jordan, and Jordan gave me a lot of databases, and I looked at those databases, and they had full feature-length scripts for a lot of the movies we've seen. So that was very helpful, and I was kind of looking for like a romantic um kind of cliche genre just because I thought it'd be easy to break that down into different locations and it wouldn't have a lot of special effects. And then Mr. T shared his original screenplay with me and I ended up using that one because I liked it the most and it was fun to read something new um, and it was something I haven't seen before or could ever see before so that was really helpful in terms of breaking everything down. And then I created a design in order for all my documents to look consistent. So I just kind of put it together in Illustrator and it's just that like bar and then those stars and it was just for like the layout of the documents. So then here are the final documents. Right here is a location sheet. And that you can see I broke down all of the locations in the screenplay. And then I broke down which scenes were in each of those locations. And I have files with the original documents without any of the um, writing in it too. And then I have a description of what you might need at the location or like anything important from the screenplay that is like mentioned that you need at the location. And then here is a days at a day sheet. So this is for the actors and this basically shows when they're working and when they're not working. So you know when to pay them and who's on set when. So there's a whole list of different um, abbreviations that are used in the days at a day sheet. But here it's just start work and then you can see working and then some of them have hold and, and the H means hold which means they're just not assigned to that day. So out of the 15 days there was only a couple of holds for these three main actors. And then this is finished work. This is the shooting schedule. So you can see which day it is, and I just basically went like January 1st to January 15th. I said which actors needed to be there, I said which scenes you were going to shoot in that day, and which location. And for this, it was just easiest to break it up by location since there weren't that many. So I broke up the scenes by location, and then I also sub-broke them up so that way you can have like different days with the same location. 
And then this is the call sheet. And so this is one of the main actors, William. So I just used him and I put January 1st. So this is what he'd be shooting on January 1st. And I wrote down the scenes that they'd be shooting, the location, the page numbers, and then basically a space for like any other notes. Thank you. Uh, Kirsten is the best. Um, she was super talented, as you can see, super organized, um, really got into this, made this like her thing. And, and you guys have been here, you've been with me for a year and a half now. Um, uh, and when you're juniors and you first kind of come in, um, you know, usually, usually within a couple of months, I can kind of peg each and every one of you and say, oh, okay, I kind of know. I kind of know who would be good at this job and who would be good at that job and kind of which, which jobs might, you might interest you. I never, I never tell you because I want you to learn everything and I want you to kind of figure things out by the time you, you know, get through your two years. But right around now, as we, as we kind of move through the pre-production and production phases of your senior narrative, you know, have, just have that in the back of your mind. You should, right around this kind of time period as, or, and over the next couple months, you should kind of figure out I really like this part of film production, or I really like this job in the film industry, or I'm really good at this. I have a talent at this. I know I'm not good at this, right? It's important. I think it's really important um, in the film industry because there are so many different jobs and a variety of responsibilities and so many different people involved. Um, one of the best things that you can do is understand where your talents are, what you're skilled at, what you're good at, what you're not so good at, what you want to pay someone else to do. Um, what you like doing, like what you're excited about, what you're passionate about, um, what you could enjoy working on for long periods of time and over and over and over again that you don't get sick of it, that kind of a thing. Um, and for Kirsty, that was this kind of stuff. That was pre-production and planning and scheduling. She just loved it and she was phenomenal at it. She's the best student I've ever had in this regard. Um, and it's not even close. I mean, she just absolutely crushed it. And as a result, their senior narrative basically went so, I've never seen a senior narrative go through production so smoothly. Um, they did not have issues on set. They still had to do some reshoots. There were still some dailies that kind of messed up. There were still some rewrites that we had to do when you know their ending wasn't so hot. Um, and we fixed a few things here and there, um, just like any other production, but they never had the major massive issues that a lot of my other seniors had because they were so well planned and so well scheduled. Um, and if you talk to um, Kirsten's uh, uh, partners on her senior narrative project, they'll tell you the same thing, which is they couldn't have done it without her um, and that everything went so smoothly because of what she did and because of what an amazing planner and scheduler that she was. So I can't stress that enough. Um, it's a really important part of the film industry um, remember, pre-production, there's more work in pre-production than there, time-wise than there is in actual production. Um, so remember, you should do a lot of your work before you ever pick up the camera um, and hit record um, because that will help you as you move on to the next stages. Um, and I do have all of her documents that she created. So if, if that's something that you want to look at and you want to use, um, some of those, a lot, most, a lot of those documents that you talked about are not required. They're not grades. Um, but if this is something that interests you and you want it for your project or you want it just for your own like experience, um, I have those with you. I, I have them in a, in a folder along with some other documents that have, I've gotten from other filmmakers and studios um, that I'll be sharing with you later today as well. So you can look at them. There are different documents in there. There are call sheets. There are waivers, for example. Um, things like that, that maybe you'll want for some of your, some of your pre-production aspects. Okay. So. So I chose. This concludes my lesson. Yes, I know. So, um, it is now time for you to begin using your line script, uh, to enter in all that information into your shot list. And then when your shot list is complete, you can use all that information to organize and schedule your shots into a shooting days, uh, into shooting days on your strip board. Now I am working towards, oh, I just got an email. Maybe that's, maybe that's what I'm talking about here. Oh, it is, it is. So I'm working on, okay, mm, okay, okay, all right. I just, so I just got a quote. I'm working on trying to get a license from Studio Binder. 
um, because their strip boards are really easy to use. And you can actually pop, you can actually, I, I tested it out last night. You can actually upload your screenplay and it'll spit it all out into a strip board. And then you're just kind of dragging and dropping and it's super, super easy um, and very professional. Um, and, but uh, it costs money. Um, so I'm trying, so I just, I just got a quote from them literally this second. Um, so I'm going to talk it over with Flo and see if there's any money left in the kitty, um, for us to play around with. Um, because if that's the case, I'll hook you guys up with a license and you guys can use that for your strip boards. And I think you would like that. Um, it's super handy. If that doesn't work out, um, then what we'll do, um, is here on your shot list. I actually have um, their Google Drive, Studio Binders Google Drive strip board, slightly modified um, here are as tabs on the shot list. So you can still do this. You just have to do it manually, which I recognize is a little bit more work, um, but still super handy um, because this is something that you're going to need as part of your uh, grade for the semester. Um, so here is an example. Um, Here's an example of a strip board. Um, so like this scene takes place in Stuart's car and it's, here's the cast number and then here's the shooting location and here's the amount of pages um, that we're gonna shoot for that. And then here's the estimated shooting time. This is where your shot list comes in handy. You can look at your shot list and all the shots for that scene and add it up and say, okay, this is what I'm gonna need. And you can add in some setup time, some moving camera time, that kind of stuff. Um, then you can figure it out. Then here's the next shot. We've got to move to a location, you know? Um, so here's a big company move to Mermaid Tavern. And then we're going to have lunch at Mermaid Tavern. So you can see how this is all scheduled out like by the minute. So, and, and it just adds to our shooting time. And then we get to nine hours and that's the end of our shooting day. Your shooting days might be shorter. I don't know if you're going to shoot for nine hours or maybe you're going to shoot for six hours or maybe you're going to shoot for four hours or maybe you're going to shoot just for a couple hours. Like that's up to you and the needs of you and your film to, for you to figure out. So you've, that's, that's kind of your responsibility. Um, so every time you need something new, um, so hopefully I can get you a license for, for a studio binder, but if not, you're just gonna use this section here and it's really easy, just, just copy and just you know, insert you know, some rows below and here's some rows below and now I'm going to paste and then here's a new thing and just so on and so forth. So just kind of copy and paste. Um, it's manual and it's a little, you know, not as exciting as dragging and dropping on studio binder. Um, but, um, it works just as well and looks exactly the same. And then there are strip board options here for you to edit. So here's the cast legend. For example, your cast is going to be different. Um, here are the set locations and you will change those. And when you change those, um, when you go to your strip board, these locations will be different in the little drop down list here. Okay. Um, are there any questions about any of that? Okay. So, for you to, just to, re just to recap so that everyone's on the same page, um, the first order of business, if you have not completed it yet, is definitely your script breakdown. Okay. That needs to be done. Um, that should probably already be done. Um, if it's not done, you can get it done super quick. That's an easy one. That's the highlighting of colors, um, the lining of your script in, in eights, breaking it up into eights, that kind of stuff. Super easy. You can get that done very, very quickly. Um, your second order of business is to finish lining the script. So you have the lining of your shots with the shot names. Uh, this is a close-up, CU. This is, you know, 7A. Um, this is a wide shot, WS, you know, so on and so forth. And then when you have that done, um, or as you do that, you know, you can enter in that information into the shot list, which is your next order of business, um, which is the shot list that I'll share with you here today. And then your final order of business will be taking that shot list and looking at the times and information in there to help you break up your shots into shooting days. Um, and you can do that in the strip board section of the shot list, the same shot list that I'm gonna send um, to you. Um, or um, if I end up getting a license for Studio Binder, I'll let you know. And then that's something that you can use um, online with them. And it's really easy just to save PDFs out from their website. Um, all of these things, all of these things are due at the end of the semester. They are basically your, your final for this semester. 
So anyone know what the last day of the semester is? I think it's the 21st. I think, um, I think that's the first day of holiday break. So I think, I think the, it's, I think it's the 18th. So you have this week, you have next week, and then you have one more week. So you have three weeks. So you have three weeks. That's pretty good. Okay. Three weeks to finish revising your screenplay. If you have, if you're still revising three weeks to, uh, to break it down, to line your script, to make your shot list, and then to break it up into shooting days. That's very, very, very doable. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it off until the, you, you, have, you definitely need to budget your time. You can't do it all a day or two before it's due. Like you'll, you'll lose your mind a little bit and it'll really hurt your creativity. And this is your film. Like you want, you want to be creative and enjoy it. So my suggestion would be finish your breakdown, finish revising your script, um, do that this week. And then on Friday, I'll have my cinematic lesson for you, my cinematography lesson for you. And then that can help you finish lining your script and making your shot list. And then once you finish that, you probably have a week, a week and a half just to work on the scheduling aspect alone. And then you'll be finished and that will be the end of your semester. Any questions at all? Everyone good? You feeling okay about it? It's kind of fun. How many of you are enjoying this process a little more than you thought maybe you, you would? Anyone? A few nodding heads? Yeah, I kind of feel the same. Some of you are like, no. <laughs> it's, it's an important part of the process. If it's not for you, that's great. In the future, you know you can hire someone else to do it for you. Um, if it is for you, hey, you may have just found your niche. You may have just found a job that you can do for the rest of your life that makes good money. So something, something to think about. Okay, um, that is all. I'll share this shot list with you. I will share these slides with you. This lesson will be uploaded in its entirety to my YouTube channel later today, probably in the evening. I'll share that with you as well. Um, I will see you on Friday. All right, so long. Farewell. 15 minutes early today. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Thank you, Mr. Thank T. You. Thank See you later. Thank you, Mr. T.